Uh, we're back. Back. We're back. We're back. It's your two favorite unknown favorites. Hey. Your, your most po unpopular popular motherfuckers. Right? Hey, they don't fuck with us, but they will. Oh, they, they will. will. Oh, they will. Oh, they will. <laughs> What's going on, folks? <laughs> it's your man D, Ground Mode Music Worldwide. Yeah, Folkland Los. Hey, also Ground Mode Music Worldwide. Is know? that right? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Yeah. So we're here in the Situation Room, man. We back with another, you know, situations that we're going to talk about. Um, whole purpose of this is just to make y'all listen to what the fuck we got to say. Hey, yeah, we got y'all attention and content is king. My motherfucker sold that content for thirty million dollars. Thirty mil. Oh, what, what's the ground mode? What's the ground mode for this gonna be worth? You know what was crazy is I had a conversation with Domingo earlier today, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Man, just keep filming, keep filming, keep, keep, filming, filming, keep doing what you're doing because you never know. Never you never know." So that's we gonna keep filming. We got two fat multimedia. You know what I mean? Making sure that everything go down the way it need to go down, and you never know. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at you're looking at the 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 future, the present, the past, mm -hmm. and we're gonna see how much the content is worth. I think right now it's about three ninety nine though. Mm -hmm. yeah. About three ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would pay that. You yeah. Hell no. <laughs> I was looking for some ingratiation, and ingratiation. I'm trying to use one of his script spelling words right now. I was looking for some ingratiation, ingratiation, ingratiation. I was looking for him to make me feel good. All right, all right? And, and you didn't. You Let just me tell you what Dion did, man. For the people out there that don't know, man, I'm feeling very blessed to be in the position I'm in right now. Mm. And it's a product of hard work, dedication, sacrifices, but also a really good team. Yes. And so I called to tell this man how good I was feeling about my team. And he had the audacity to act as if he didn't hear none of the things I was saying as I was spilling my heart out. I was feeling very emotional. I don't know, it was just one of those days it was very lunar activity. When it's a full moon, I'm an Aquarius. And when it's a full moon, I get a little loopy. You know what I mean? And I was feeling like crying on the telephone talking to my dog. About things that was going on in my life. And he said, hello, 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 hello? And I was like, please tell me you heard anything I said. Just like, he said, no, I ain't hear it. You got to say it again. <laughs> then he's like, I just play. You can't play <laughs> with an emotional nigga. Yeah, so, so, mind you, this call took place at like 7 o'clock in the morning. 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. I don't even think the sun was out yet. So he calls me. Like, yo, bro, I just want to tell you, man, you know, over the last three years, you've been, you know, you've been there and making sure that things is going the right way. And, you know, from where we started to where we at now, what's on the horizon, man, I'm just so thankful. So he was rambling, you know, getting out his emotions. And so what I did was in the middle of this conversation, I was like, hello. Yeah, my bad. I'm back. And, and he was like, <laughs> he was like, what? I said, yeah, I told you to hold on. You ain't hear me? And he was like, no. So you ain't hear what I was saying? I said, no, I ain't hear what you were saying. What were you saying? I put you on hold. I told you to hold on. And then I was like, it's like, no, I heard you, bro. So, you know. It's a foolery, man. Yeah, man. You gotta have thick skin and ground mode, man. I feel, like, I feel like any lesser man in ground mode would be like, damn, that's fucked up. See, that's why niggas, you know what I mean? But I was like, that's just Dion. Yeah, you you gonna get some you gonna get some madness with me, man. You never know. It's all unscripted, man. I'm not an actor. Mm. You know what I mean? I I remember I tried the comedy shit, man. When I was in college, man. When they you know, and everybody knew me from you know being funny because I yeah. cut up everywhere. It don't matter. It's like I don't even call it like it's not even really cutting up. I'm just it's just in me. Mm. And so everybody was like, yo, you should do you should do comedy, you should do stand up and all this stuff here. So they had me hyped up, right? Mm. So they put together like the slippery rock talent show and all this stuff here. And I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm good. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I guess comedians, like professional comedians, come up with their little, you know, what they gonna say and they practice and rehearse and mm -hmm. you know, get their timing and all that stuff down. You know, at 18 years old, I just thought, you know, you just go you up just there and talk shit, right? <laughs> so 
so the dude that I went up against, it was only two of us. Oh, it was a competition. It was a competition, uh, yeah. So um, it was only two of us. So the dude who I went up against never appeared to be funny. Oh, uh, okay. Right? <clears throat> so this is at the time Outkast had just came out. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking like 93, mm -hmm. 94. Outkast was, you know, making their they moves or whatever. So they had the song Hootie Hoot, right? Yeah. So he came up with like the Hootie Hoot Awards. Uh, okay. So he came out. So, yeah, I'm going to talk to y'all about who's getting the Hootie Hoot Awards. So he just started shouting out people in the audience. <laughs> you get the Hootie Hoot Award for da 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 And people are laughing. And he's like, Hootie Hoot. <laughs> so his shit was dope. This yeah, shit was like super yeah, dope. Yeah. So I had to go after him, right? Mm -hmm. So I got up there and I realized I'm not funny. Right? <laughs> not at all. And and I literally it was like five, you had five minutes, man. Yeah. And so after they played the music and I did my little dance and all that stuff there, and I was like, yo, what, what, well, well, uh, you ever wait a minute, hold on. Man. I'm trying to remember the jokes from in the back of the joke book and shit like right. that, man. No, none of that. Everybody was like on edge, like, cause they know me, they know me, like I'm wild, I'm crazy, like shit's good. This nigga about to say some shit. I ain't had nothing prepared, you know, any of that. So all that to say, mm. proper preparation mm. prevents piss poor performance. I did it. I fucked up. Oh, I'm not a comedian. Oh. Day, so that's what it is, man. All day, every day, man. But yeah, man. I say all that to say, I don't know what I was trying to say, but I decided. That's what make the situation really dope, <laughs> man. You, you don't know what you're gonna get on here, man. So if you're watching this, man, like literally, just just sit back and enjoy the ride. There ain't no telling where this trip is gonna take you. All right, all right. So what we talking about, man? Uh, so man, um, let's uh, let's get into the first one, man. The Chris Brown one, that's that's probably the hottest one, and we simply got limited time, let's not play with the people. Chris Brown has been dealing with somebody that alleged that he uh, raped her. She went all the way to rape, she didn't say sexual assault. Right. She didn't say me too, she said me too, was <coughs> rape, flat out. But, uh, and you know like, this is this, this like the, it's the, it's the usual suspects, right? Like famous black man. Uh, you know what I mean? Unassuming young girl, starlet or whatever. Right. And they they've been raped. You know what I mean? And it's just like we hear this story so many times, but we we typically don't ever really have receipts. And this time, uh, Breezy got receipts. He got the receipts. Yeah. So I just wanted to just bring that to the forefront and just I don't know how you feel like that is. I mean, obviously we can. I we I support I support this mm -hmm. particular. Like the way that this went down, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't know. What, what was your initial thoughts when you heard the story? So uh, initially, you know what I mean? It was just like you said, another black man getting accused of some shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I think as a celebrity, you know what I mean? You guys end up being in very um, slippery situations, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know they put it all out there. You know what I mean? The media put it all out there, what your worth is, and you know how much you made, and what endorsement deal you just got, and all this stuff here. So mm -hmm. people are very much aware of like your financial situation. Mm -hmm. And when you talking about an artist like Chris Brown, that's been on you know mega superstar status. You know what I mean? Since he pretty much came into the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, he's like close to more number ones than Michael Jackson or oh, some shit. shit. Like his 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 body of work is like impressive. I think if you go and do the research, you'd see like he's up there. Like mm -hmm. Mike might be here and he might be here, if not surpassed him. Like yeah. I know that there was some talk about that um a couple years ago, like one or two more albums and he passed number uh Mike Jackson or some shit. Yeah. So <clears throat> You know, when you're on that level, you really got to be careful of the social circles that you, you know, you find yourself in, mm -hmm. um, because the leeches is out there. They yeah. going, you know, what I mean, they going to try to do what it is that they do to try to get what they want, um, and and try to get you to, you know, give them a bag to keep their mouth shut or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, since the Rihanna situation, he's he's really he's done done. a great job of just managing his 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 uh, personal life mm -hmm. and keeping whatever is going on in his personal life. From being, you know, yeah. uh, sensationalized in the media. Mm -hmm. um, so when this came out, it was just like, damn. Uh, but like you said, he had receipts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so if you had the opportunity to listen to like the little clip that they put out, um, you know, she she basically said, I enjoyed myself. You mm -hmm. know, I had a good time. I want you to do it again. Why ain't you picking up the phone? Right. So this seems more like some, I'm going to get back at you. 
for, for ghosting me. Oh, look, Los the Ghost, we know about that. Los the Ghost, we know about that. But, um, yeah, so, you know I mean? She, she, you know, seems like she's trying to do some damage control. Yeah. Um, I'd of, out of feel some type of way for getting one and done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with her saying, it was so good. You were like the best ever. So, could you, is any of this his fault? It's kind of, it, it, it's hard to say because, um, you know, you, you're always going to get this from me. I always start at eight when it comes down to a situation, right? So, um, I can't, I can't necessarily say it's his fault because we don't know how the, the interaction went like if she was completely willing and you know what I mean they 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 linked up and you know they was at the party and everything was cool and 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 she made it where he was comfortable being in her company mm -hmm. in private yeah. then I, I can't say it's his fault mm -hmm. you know what I mean is it our fault when we you know had sex with whoever we had sex with mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying um, I mean, not I knowing she would flip the script. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now, if it's a different type of situation mm -hmm. and he pressing her yeah. and, and trying to make her feel or, or like she put it out there that he drugged her and shit mm -hmm. like that, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's, yeah, that's I a mean, different way. Yeah, I mean, she's actually asking for drugs from him. You know what I mean? Like, and I thought that I was super vulnerable because in, even in the text messages, he's like, kind of like re responding in a way that lets you know he's, he's about, you know, he's into that type mm -hmm. of shit. So, I mean, that, that was kind of daring in itself, just kind of putting itself out there just so that he can make sure the truth got out. The reason I asked, like, was any of his fault is, like, I mean, you don't know, I feel like everybody been in a smash and dash type situation. Right. I feel like those... That unclaimed pussy. Right. Y'all done all had some unclaimed <laughs> pussy out there. There's been that one big chick that you didn't want nobody to know that you stabbed. <laughs> That you done came down on. Is there or that one, one cock at girl that was like, I'll see <laughs> some in. That you done came down on. And you, you better not say nothing, goddamn. You better not say nothing. Don't you say a word. <laughs> Alright, I'll let you do it. Yourself. But go ahead. Can you. I mean, he's fully. You're fully within your right. I mean, I guess it's kind of shitty to do. But you're fully within your right to completely ghost a motherfucker. Like, that's not illegal and shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Could be considered, uh, what's the word? It's ego bashing. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's ego yeah, bruising. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? You you know what I mean? You think you do your thing and you go pick up the phone and call Shorty back. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, either straight to voicemail or, mm -hmm. you know, couple rings to voicemail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you see her and she walk right past you and be all, hey. Oh, Bruh. Fuck up. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it's a, it's an ill feeling, and you know, people when they get their egos bruised or they get their feelings hurt, it's, it, you know, a lot of people lash out. When we look yeah. at like how cats get into like drama and shit, a yeah. lot of times it's behind somebody having a hurt feeling. I'm butt hurt over this post you put up, yeah. so we about to wet your block up. Right, I'm right. butt hurt that you tapped my girl, so mm -hmm. I'm about to fuck you up. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Do you do it? If you're Chris Brown. Internationally known on the microphone. Mm -hmm. You got hoes in different area codes. I mean, do you get past the place of being? Are you desensitized? Do you do you do you think to yourself, I should handle this with tact, otherwise, shit like this might could happen? Or do you just say? Or are you just saying fuck it? You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, again, it all depends on like what the what the situation was in the in the beginning that made it possible to go from. Point A to point B, did they have interaction in the past? Was she somebody that was at some other parties? Mm -hmm. Is it somebody that they that was in the same social circle? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did did she make him feel like I'm not that type of person that you have to worry about? You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you, your sex drive is still your sex drive, no matter how much bread you got in your bank. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if you got an opportunity to get some ass, most motherfuckers gonna take advantage of the opportunity <laughs> to get some ass. Um, it's a problem when you force the situation. You know what I'm saying? It's a problem when she's not comfortable with you and you're trying to force her to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little different when she's comfortable with you yeah. and it's just a matter of you evaluating whether or not you want to do it or not. Like, yeah. does she meet the physical criteria that's going to make the Wally man stand up mm -hmm. at attention so you can put your thing down because the last thing you want to do <laughs> is put some trash dick out there. You know what I'm saying? And You know what I mean? Now you got now the you reputation. Yeah, now you got a whole shot. Another Go set of tweets and like IG posts and all that shit chat. there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she got to fit the criteria to make sure the soldiers is ready to march. Um, and if that's the case, then, you know what I mean? Boom. So I can't necessarily say he's at fault or should he handle it with tact or whatever the case may be. It's just great that he got receipts. Yeah. You know? It's great that 
You know what I mean? As the situation unfolds and as they investigate, they'll be able to see, like, this is a, a, a an attack on him mm -hmm. and not him, you know, being being that way. You dig what I'm saying? Should there be a mandatory minimum for false accusations? I mean, I believe it's against the against the law. Yeah, you know what I mean? Once like, they but, prove it, once yeah. they prove it, then yeah, you got to get held accountable based off of how the law is written mm -hmm. in regards to like making false accusations and mm -hmm. you know defamations of character and all mm -hmm. that stuff there that come come across with that. And from what I understand, he has a countersuit going yeah. um, and things of that nature. So I'm I'm pretty sure based off of you know his his you know clapback, um, he's pretty much aware of like. I know what it was. Yeah. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. I got the proof. I'm standing up. Um, and I agree with Charlemagne. Charlemagne, you were 100%, you know, on point in your comment that the media should eat up this av aspect of it as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. You know what I mean? The stuff that he's showing that that on his end, just like they ate it up when she made the accusations. It's mm -hmm. all over the place. Oh my God, it's Chris Brown again. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Blah 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 blah. Hold on. Now it's this. Mm -hmm. Where's the coverage? Media, come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Let's have some let's have some transparency and let's have some equality. But we know media is all about the bullshit. Mm -hmm. So that's why we own the media. We own our own media so we can control our own narrative because the the mainstream media is is really just about the fucked up re man. They they just want the they just want the thuggest fucking shit. If I was Chris Brown, I would probably have some hoe getters. I would have hoe getters that know my type, that could vet hoes, like, and like, like, you're not, you're, you're, you're not getting the Chris Brown unless my hoe getter okay that shit. You know what I mean? So like, do the hoe getters get some head to get past you? To get past them to you? <coughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, so I, so I got my man Folkland Los, right? So you, you all know who Folkland Los is. He's all over the place, baby, look. He's interested in you, right? Yeah, and you know, you know what I mean? You know what he do. You see him all over the place. Listen, babe, listen. I'm going to hook you up, right? Because you his type. Mm. You are his type. But what I got to do is make sure the neck is right. Ah! You know what I'm saying? I got to make sure that the neck is worthy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see if you can do this with no hands. You feel me? And, um, you know, we're going we gonna to get it popping on the handstand. The and if everything is good, I'm going to introduce you to my dog, Fogland. You're his type, baby. You're his type. I, I don't know if that makes any fucking sense, bro. Cause now you're leaving, you're leaving your legacy and reputation and, and everything else like that on another nigga's judgment. I just feel like I just feel even like, if it's your nigga, like he he gonna think with his dick. I really feel like I feel like a girl should not be able to just approach Chris Brown. And I all, feel like there should be a heavy vetting process of. Yo, is she crazy as fuck? Let's 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 do our homework on this bitch. All right, Los, let's 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 look at this and through a realistic lens, man. I, I love it. That is realistic. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But you're saying that a girl should not be able to approach somebody like Chris Brown. Let's not just the not, okay. All right. Let's just okay. So <clears throat> you're out. We we we've been out, right? Mm -hmm. We've been on some high celebrity shit, right? Mm -hmm. VIP bottles, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. If we going out with all of our squad, right? So mm -hmm. we talking anywhere between 15 and 20 dudes, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes up to 50. Mm -hmm. What the fuck do we look like sitting in a VIP with a whole bunch of niggas? That shit don't make no damn sense. When so I what are we going to do? What are we going to do, bro? Okay. You are going to send your peoples out to find the, the baddest shorties in the club to come on over in this section, okay. right? The ones who didn't come with us, we're going to get some more up in this section. Mm -hmm. Guess who those are? Random females right and guess what they're gonna do have access to you because now they're in your section now they're they're around you they're drinking they're smoking they're having a good time because we don't want to look like a bunch of fucking sword fighting dick niggas Bruh. all up in the vip section which is all my niggas that shit's weird as fuck it's not happening you dig what I'm saying? What so again, I say I'm saying coming from a realistic perspective, mm -hmm. if we're talking about he was at a party, he was at a Diddy, a Diddy party at that. Mm -hmm. You already know if Diddy's throwing a party, that's not just random people access. That's not just like, oh shit, I was walking down the street and I seen Diddy was having a party, so I walked over and went to the crib. Mm -hmm. That is like the people in the social circle who is familiar, that got the access, that got the pass, that got the little, you know, whatever it is that they get to be able to get into that party past Diddy security. Fuck Chris Brown at that point. 
Chris Brown is comfortable in that space because he knows Diddy has his own vetting situation. Diddy's been known to throw the Lydia's parties in Hollywood across the country for years. Mm -hmm. He came in the game throwing parties. So, of course, he's going to have situations where he mitigate his risk. Mm -hmm. So, if she's there, it's already assumed that she, she, she deserves to be there. She's one of the chosen. I could, I so, if she starts choosing while she's there and she's choosing you, mm -hmm. you're not going to look at it like, oh, man, this is a random chick that's up in Diddy's party. I definitely am. I mean, but I'm a different nigga. You are a, 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 a tiger stripe with peculiar stripes raised around saber tooth. Like, I'm not. And the, and the thing, too, is like, even though, like, I'm a different nigga mentally, Chris Brown is a different nigga. Just he's an extraordinary nigga. So you have to go through extraordinary measures in your life. You can't do things the way a regular nigga would do it. So but that's not, that's what I'm saying, but, but with, with you, okay, and I agree 100%, I agree 100%, but that's not a regular nigga party. Okay. That's not a regular nigga party. Okay. That's not a regular nigga shit. Nothing about that is regular nigga. I feel like assume nothing. I would not, I'm not going to assume just because you know P. Diddy, you're cool. <sighs> okay. All I'm right. not gonna do that. All right, I'm, I'm personally. We gonna see what happens as this man's glow up continues <laughs> to go. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, we I'm working not worried about as, that, man. as this man's oh. glow up I'm continues not to about go. That, man. Yeah, yeah. We gonna we gonna put the narrative out there. We gonna put the narrative out there. Los is broke with ED. <laughs> He's broke with ED. So that's a matter. That's an automatic goddamn groupie. <laughs> Groupie runaway, he ain't got nothing to worry about, bro. Happy life, happy life right there, man. Hey, yo, what's up with you, boo? Nah, I'm broke with ED, baby. Bruh. She turned into a road runner. Meet me. Gone. <laughs> Off to the next one. So you good, bro. Good you good. Wild, man. I'm just saying, like, you got, I mean, like, he's a rock star, right? I guess, you know, I'm not expecting him to be perfect, but after all he done been through, like, with Rihanna, Karuchi, and just the, the drama he's been through, you got to go through extraordinary measures, bro. Like, I just... I can't, I can't find out you crazy. No, nah, that's some shit I got to know way before we start fucking around. Like, but but say, yeah. <clears throat> the beauty about crazy is the ones who are good at masking it. The ones who, who, who I get you the ones who are nutty buddies situationally. Mm -hmm. Now, the ones who crazy, crazy. The thing about crazy is a true crazy motherfucker don't know they crazy. <laughs> they think they perfectly fine. They think ain't nothing wrong with them talking to themselves and, and doing the shit they doing. They looking at you like there's something wrong with you. Put your head down. Put my hand down for what? That's me saying, that's me like, hold up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What's up? No, no. Right, right. So, true crazy don't know it's crazy, right? Situational crazy is that person who knows that they'll go to any limit if they're provoked. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And it just see you don't you don't know a person is situational until they're in that situation. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you know, the female that you've been dating and everything good, you know what I mean? You get that first fuck up and your clothes is burnt. What the fuck? <laughs> you burn my clothes, bitch. What the fuck? We didn't have all these wonderful days and nights and the first night I don't come home on time. You got my shit out back on, on like like some some bonfire? Like what the fuck? You don't know that going in. I, I just figured since you like the bitch so much you wanna be buried next to her. Like, oh Bruh. right? <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tell death do you know the fuck is part. Uh-huh. And that's what it be. <laughs> That's what it be. So yeah, I do agree. Like you gotta have you know some sort of a a, a vetting process in that. But I just think that there's there's just, I mean, it, you can't you can't mitigate all risks. Like you and can't, I was I was like there's no perfect the situation. Shit, but I feel like you definitely should have people. There should be channels. Like you're you're a phenomenal motherfucker. At a certain point in grind mode, niggas should not bitches or niggas should not be able to just be like. Nobody should be able to get your telephone number directly at a certain point when they. Should I mean, it's, it's it's like yeah, that man, now. Man, Not like, anybody could get to me. Yeah, man, like man. I'm like there's there's I get the calls. Hey, so and so's reaching mm -hmm. out or want to reach out or I'll get a message like yo I want to you know what I mean so I do agree. Um, and I don't think there's nothing wrong. No, with you. nobody. There's the very few people got this one. It's the business phone. <laughs> very few got this one. So yeah, I, I do agree. You I, think, I don't think there's nothing wrong with like yeah, if you were out of a situation, you're a single dude. You 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 on that level of Chris Brown status, Drake status. You got your man like you. Somebody should be able to get your man their number for you. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm 
100% sure that that happens. I'm 100% sure that that happens. But at the same time, in that moment, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So I got my, I'm your man, right? Mm -hmm. And you're looking at Shorty and you're like, oh shit, you know what I mean? She, she, she's nice and, you know what I mean? Like, D, you know what I mean? I need you, I'm gonna go see what's up with her. Mm -hmm. I go talk to her and she come across as being the right way mm -hmm. and I don't feel any, any issue out of that, yeah. I'm gonna be like, yo, mm -hmm. here. Yeah, you. you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. I vetted it. Everything's yeah. good. I'm your dude. I'm that guy. I'm mm -hmm. the number runner. I'm the don't no go. I'm the pussy go getter. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's what I do, and I did a good job at yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. Can I fuck your friend? You know what I mean? Like there it is. Let's go. But at the same time. Mm -hmm. If she, if you do some shit to make her flip the switch, mm -hmm. you dig what I'm saying, or you, 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 she flipped the switch, mm -hmm. like, then, then, you can't say it's your fault, you can't say it's my yeah. fault, like, there's, just, I don't, I don't know, it's just, you're a very concrete and ideal person, y'all gonna pick that up on the situation <laughs> room about this guy, very concrete, very ideal, this man believes in very clear lines, they're not blurred, they are clear <laughs> as a motherfucker, and we gonna expose them shits on here. <laughs> Can they be exposed? We I'm, gonna see. I don't have enough pride for real. But uh, you want to go to the next one? Let's go. What are we talking about? Vince Stable. He made a comment that you're worth more dead as a rapper than alive. What you think about that? <clears throat> I think in the sense of um, artists that are signed to record labels, um, when it's all said and done with, it goes back to a little bit of our conversation last week um, in regards to it's about the money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's really about the money. So... Um, People do, you know, have their mourning process. You know, an artist passes away. Let's just say they were, you know, fairly popular. They pass away. You know what I mean? People start reminiscing and playing their music again. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Giving, you know, going through their memory lane and, you know, recalling the life of the artist. And they're doing it from more of a celebratory mourning perspective. Mm -hmm. But in business, the record company, see the, they, they see the grain in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? They know that... Uh, People wasn't playing this record or this artist's music as much alive yeah. now that they've passed. We know we have a surge point where people are going to start listening. The radio is going to start playing tribute songs. And, you know, I mean, we're going to have our memory. So if I own the rights to the music, yeah, I'm, I'm good. And if there's no estate in place, if there's no, no will in place, mm -hmm. if there's no, um, you know, and a lot of artists don't do that with their contracts. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They get happy with their events. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They take their events. They try to make the best of it. They come back. They get more money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They try to make the best of it, depending on how that recouping situation mm -hmm. looks and how, how well you're doing as an artist you might be in debt yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying and mm -hmm. there's nothing to give to anybody else mm -hmm. so when you pass all that shit just spikes up because now we're listening to it as fans yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying we're mourning with the artists and their family the record companies is eating that up the radio stations the DJs every the the, the um you know, show hosts and all that, they're they're talking about it because they're media, you know what I mean? Radio is media. Mm -hmm. So it's their responsibility to port, report on what's happening. So if it's like I said, somebody that's big, yeah, it's just gonna go it's gonna go dumb. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? And the record company is gonna sit back and, you know what I mean, eat off of it. I don't think that uh it, it, like for me, it's 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 a no brainer. It's like a duh, a duh. Yeah. How could you not uh, un, like yeah. expect that? Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the business mm -hmm. you in. Mm -hmm. It goes back to like just artists being aware of of the business. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A lot of artists just focus on their talent, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, and and really just. You know, all I want to do is rap, or all I want to do is sing, and they, you know, start putting pieces of the puzzle together to try to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the labels, the labels put their pieces of the puzzle to make sure they gonna get back what they get back because mm -hmm. they're the bank. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm bankrolling all this. I'm paying for your wardrobe. I'm paying for your videos. I'm paying for your radio runs. I'm paying for your uh, tour uh, promo tour spots and all this shit there. Like all that shit costs. Mm -hmm. I'm paying your per diems at hotels for the cities you're going to. I'm paying your flights. Like all that shit is coming out the pocket. Yeah. You owe all of that back, bro. And I passed. You owe all that. You owe all that back. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got you written in stone because most record companies start out with like there's there's a, a, a point in there that's like this this contract stands right for the whole universe and right, the entirety the of, of you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's right right off top. 
It like they're taking it. Is. Like this, this shit is long standing. You know what I'm saying? So we might give you a term. We might give you a term of two, three albums or five albums or whatever the case may be. But if you haven't had the opportunity to deliver on those albums, mm -hmm. guess what we're going to capitalize off of? Yeah. Your death. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Because you're still contractually obligated mm -hmm. to meet these expectations. Because for a lot of artists, like. If it wasn't for the label, who would know you? Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't for the label and the PR firms that they have associated with the labels and their relationships with the press to cover the artists and their relationship with radio to be able to service the record, the radio and set up the interviews and have them at the Lydia's parties and mm -hmm. all that shit there and give them that validation that that we as the consumer look for, oh, man, that's so-and-so. He signed to so-and-so. He rock with so-and-so. He got a record with so-and-so. Now I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that artist was still making the same dope music five years ago. You ain't know shit about him. Mm -hmm. You listened to him on SoundCloud. You kept it pushing. Mm -hmm. You you heard his first joint on, on Spotify. You pushed Skip. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Five years later... The, the record company and blew him up and you listening to everything. Yeah. You think what I'm saying? Like that's our that's our we as consumers have to take responsibility for how fucked up things are because we don't pay attention to people until they have some sort of status. Mm -hmm. That's on us, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's on us as consumers. So Can I jump in there, but the thing I wanted to say is, um okay. Or maybe this is more of a question. Why do you think that the people that are closest to the artist, like it'll be the homie, the, the, the artist homies or click or their family, why do you think that they always feel a sense of being jipped or jobbed? Or maybe they feel like the label is being disingenuous and it's just a money grab and you know what I mean? They didn't look out for the peoples in the situation. You know what I mean? Like why do because they, why they feel so slighted? The record companies are going to honor what's written on that paper. Mm. Forget anything else. Mm -hmm. They're only obligated to honor what's written on that paper. Mm -hmm. If your homies, your family, your kids, your moms, your sisters, like if they're not included in that paperwork, bro, yeah. the record companies are not obliged to look out. That's now, now morally, you would hope like the A and R and the people that you've been that you made this lot of money for, you know, at the record label, know that you're getting, you know, million dollars, you know, coming in from uh elevated streams and shit like that. You mm -hmm. would you would hope morally mm -hmm. they would say, okay, let's cut a check to the family. Yeah. But they're not obligated to. And when you talking about like the head of these companies, like at the end of the day, they don't really give a fuck about the culture. They give a fuck about the money. You know what I'm saying? So whatever the circumstances was that led to the death, whether it was drugs, being in the streets, or, you know what I mean, you was out drinking and driving, or whatever it was that led to the death, that's what they're going to look at. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have been drinking and driving. Oh, man, you shouldn't have been beefing with, you know, so-and-so. You know they had hitters. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you shouldn't have been taking them drugs. So a lot of times they're not going to give, you know, too many fucks to, like, What's going on? Two points. One, one point is, is there is there any, because we talked about tact in the last situation. Is there a tactful way for the labels to do this without the the family or the closest kin feeling fucked off? You know what I mean? Yeah, if they have a moral, if they take a moral inventory and decide to do it. Mm -hmm. But again, they're only obligated based off of what's contractually in place. Mm -hmm. So if my moral event if, if my moral composition isn't set to give a damn about you your family your livelihood and all that stuff there mm -hmm. then i'm not even going to think about it yeah i'm going to focus on ingesting the bread that we need to continue to elevate this shit for as long as we can and yo how many how many unrecorded unreleased records do we have of them mm -hmm. you know what i mean can we put together another album and release it you know what i mean mm -hmm. we're going to go like that's where my mindset's going to be you dig what I'm saying? And unfortunately, that's what a lot of them do. And another thing I wanted to say is, like, I know you've heard of it in the past, like, a hip-hop union. Do you think something like that is realistic? And, like, like if Diddy, Jigga, Dre, and they decided to, like, okay, we're going we're gonna to create a coalition of even a retirement plan. Maybe not even a union, but just, like, yo, if you get with us, we'll do some revenue sharing. We'll put you in a situation where it's, like, when you get old and beat up in the game, chewed up and spit out, if you sold X amount of records or something like that, healthcare or some shit like that, do you think something like that is possible? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't, you know, see something like that, you know, taking place um, in that because, unfortunately, like, 
the music industry is blood sport. Mm -hmm. So if I if I shed my blood, sweat, and tears to get here, I'm not giving no handouts. You know what I'm saying? Like the people my day ones is going. You know what I mean? Be mm -hmm. what they are. And anybody else that come up is going to be business because that's the nature of the business. Mm -hmm. So, again, understanding the industry that you're in, understanding the nature of the business is going to continue, you know, as as such. Now, you got some disruptors in that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, you know, Jay-Z is definitely a disruptor, you know, in that. But yet and still, don't get it fucked up. He's still conducting music business on the art for the artist that's side in the Rock Nation mm -hmm. just as... Uh, uh, you know whoever. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Interscope. What's my man's name over Jimmy Interscope? Yeah, Jimmy Iovine's gonna conduct on his artist that side of Interscope. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's still gonna be you know that same element in place because that's the nature of the business. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about you know some of the biggest and most successful artists that 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 paved the way and made uh you know billions of dollars. So we're talking the the Jay Zs. The Dre's, the Kanye's, you know what I mean? The Drake, Drake is on his way up there. Um, the you know, baby, you got people who are like really Master P who are in these these spaces. Yeah. Um, I think Master P is probably the only person who would be willing, willing you know what I mean? Like he's a revolutionary mm -hmm. and, and he, he also is a disruptor and a non giver fucker of the system. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? So I see him being more likely to do it than anybody else mm -hmm. because that's just not their mindset. So if it's not in your mindset to like, you know, do for the people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you do for the people as it benefits you. See, when I was thinking, when I'm saying Dre, Jigga, Diddy, them was kind of like the congressman or the spokesman or the president, so to speak, of hip hop. Yeah, you know I mean, you could throw Master P in there too. Like those are the statesmen of hip hop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those are the people when they speak. Typically, no matter what wavelength you're on, gangster, whatever, backpack, you kind of listen to what they talking about. And right. Like, and they kind of forge the direction of where hip hop is going in a way. Right. Especially from like a black excellence business perspective. So what I'm saying is not them coming out of pocket, even though I'd imagine there would be some type of financial expense to doing this, but like more so being the voice of 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 reason. To, to galvanize everybody and say, look, yo, under the umbrellas of the of the founding, you know, like the... The, the founding fathers. Yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, 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 I mean, like, you like, yo, and I don't want to say founding fathers because I could be derogatory. Right, 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 right. But, like, you know, the Mount Rushmore of hip-hop, so to speak, or something like that, like, you know, can we, can we, can we influence you, incentivize you to get on this wave? You're going to come out of your pocket and pay dues into this shit, but, you know, we're going to create the umbrella, you know what I mean? That's kind of more or less what I was thinking about. I got you. I'm sorry. Life in grind mode. Yeah, so uh, again, I think that it goes back to the mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if it's not in their mindset to, to do that, because they're definitely in position. They, they're, they're, they, they have the influence. They have the capital. But if that was the case, like... We would have like black owned distribution companies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You only got three, Sony, Warner, and Universal. Mm -hmm. They they could literally compete and develop the next, you know, distribution company. If if you know that if that's what you know what I mean they want it. I don't I don't know. It's 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 really it's it's really hard to get into um why people you know, do what they do mm. once they get to a certain place. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to, like, their personal agenda. Like, mm. these are the things that I want to focus on. You know what I mean? Again, I put in this blood, sweat, and tears to yeah. get here. Mm. I deserve it, and this is where I'm at with it. You mm. dig what I'm saying? Um, and again, you know, a lot of them get involved in initiatives that benefit them. Yeah. You know, I'll start a foundation to help, you know, the community but this foundation still benefits me yeah. because whether I do it as a nonprofit and get tax benefits right, or, yeah. you know what I mean, I'm raising money to, mm -hmm. you know, do this. I'm still getting, you know, paid from this or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. getting extra publicity, you know, from this or whatever the case may be. It's, uh, you know, that's human nature. A lot of yeah. folks are just self-driven. And what you're talking on is like more of a of a giver. You yeah. know what I mean? You're, you're looking at more of like a, a philanthropist. Yeah. And I don't think that you know, the guys that was just mentioned have true philanthropy in their spirit. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not, like, a Pan-Africanist or anything like that, but I am very inspired by, like, or just, I don't know, I'm very just intrigued and just 
in awe of what Marcus Garvey tried to do. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we need another movement like that as a people. What did Marcus Garvey try to do? Just basically just galvanize all African peoples on the planet. You know man, I mean? when I when I hear galvanize, man, I think it's like putting together a building or shoveling or something. What the f what, what is that, man? Stop with these scripts spelling B words, man. Man, <laughs> man listen. Galvanize means just put people together of like mind. You know what I mean? Like you would, and but you you know, you kinda kinda compel them, you know. You Ooh, so that sounds like a grandma thing. <laughs> hey, right, right. Okay, right, so right. I'm a galvanizer. Yeah, you are a galvanizer. Oh, that's super yeah. dope, super dope. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, he he like he created distribution systems. Like he created he created a, a a trade like a international trade system based solely off of being African of African descent. And he had connections in South America, the Caribbean, African nations, and uh, the shit would have been crazy dope. But you know, the FBI was like, "Fuck y'all niggas!" And mm -hmm. they, they did everything they could to thwart the efforts. They even like fucking. They even like fucking uh, sabotage his boats, like like he would. They would just put like bombs on the boats, right. so that they wouldn't fucking set sail and shit like that. But I mean, he, he like had people paying dues into the Pan African movement, like you know, and he would, he would give people official ranks, like mm -hmm. you was. There was literally like a nation being built within the nation under, right. under the nose of Uncle Sam. But you know, once they caught wind, they just basically destroyed everything. Just like they do everything else, man. Yeah. It's like they do everything else, man. This is America, mm. <laughs> 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 and they ain't going. They're they're not gonna let, not let it be known. Mm -hmm. You think what I'm saying? And I think also, I think again, um, that that real that reality mm -hmm. may play a big part in the decision making as to why yeah. I get. My billion, you mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make sure I do everything within my right to protect that billion mm -hmm. because I know I'm in a fucked up system yeah. that could create some bullshit at any given time mm -hmm. and take me from the hero to the enemy. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And take away everything that I've ever, that I've worked for. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it happen on on so many different occasions. And if we get into like the social aspect of it, you know what I mean? That's Tulsa, Black Wall Street, you know what I'm saying, looking at it, well, I can't necessarily speak on the Black Lives Matter movement, I don't know how much of that is, like, them really just fucking up, and, and really yeah. just, like, blowing it, um, you know what I'm saying, come. versus, uh, let's let's try to neutralize them, mm -hmm. you dig what I'm saying, we've seen it with the Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. um, we, we've seen it with with just the development of like street gangs, how they went from being protectors of the community mm -hmm. to the community being, you know, flooded with drugs and yeah. all that stuff there and then mm -hmm. they turn on each other. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? So I think that they are there are uh huge uh elements that mm -hmm. that go into a person's thought process when you're talking about really like yeah. saying F the system. Like yeah. it's, it's just on a crack and we're just going forget all about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I feel you. but it's I'm inspired. I mean, I guess I feel hopeful, even though I was telling, I, I was, I don't know. It's hip hop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's hip hop, and uh, you know, I was telling my girl like, I I feel, I feel pessimistic sometimes about black people just because of the system, right? Not because of black people. I know black people are capable, but the system is very, very deliberate. It but is. I do feel optimistic about hip hop to the capacity that it transcends a lot of language. Like you got Bloods and Crips on the same song, do a tour together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you got backpack rappers doing stuff with gangsters just because hip hop is a, it's sort of become a universal language. Right, you know I mean? right, like, right. And it's and, and it's like not only a universal language, but it's a universal culture that's being adopted all over the world. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but that's again, that's America's. That's that's corporate America's. Smile and fear. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh shit, let's, let's, this is beautiful. We can capitalize like crap off of this, yeah. but we still got to contain it because the moment, the moment they realize that they have all the power, and if they decide to unify within that power, oh shoot, we gone. Mm -hmm. That's it for us. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's marginalize it. Let's take away the conscious rap. And let's put the bread behind the bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you want to talk about twerking and shooting up the club, we're going to put a bag behind you. Mm -hmm. But if you want to come talk to us about some United stuff, uh, people ain't interested in that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we all know, we all know from, from just 
our own experience with music. The more you hear something, the more you ex it, it end up liking it. Mm -hmm. There's been tons of records that came out. The first time you heard it, you were like, oh my gosh, the, that's so terrible. Mm -hmm. That's mud. Mm -hmm. And then you done heard it so many times mm -hmm. on the radio and other people playing it and in the club, the whole night. Next thing you know, you talking about pop that pussy, bitch. Pop that, pop that pussy, bitch. <laughs> Grandma, why are you just in church yesterday? <laughs> what the hell you singing that for? <laughs> Pop that pussy, Grandma bitch. A pussy That's pussy. my jam, baby. That's my jam. You know grandma's is only like 32 right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, and hip-hop yeah. is, again, it's that universal language, man. Yeah. So a 32-year-old grandma, you know what I'm saying? She, she's, she's still at the club. She's still getting it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that's a good place to end. I was going to talk about some foolishness, but... I feel like we need to let it go. Are we gonna talk about it next week? Yeah, uh, it might be old by then. You wanna bring it up now? I don't know. How are we looking at? It's eight. It's seven minutes after eight. Uh, Diddy versus Mace. Mhm. Mm he just put out a diss track. Mace put out a diss track. Yeah. Mm. Put out a diss track against. Uh, when this year? Like yesterday. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Shout out Michelle in the building. She's pulling it up. Oh, I want to hear. Hey, the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi code is right on the whiteboard. So if you need to connect, go on and connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Listen to it. Let us know what you think. So, I, was, I, was, I was about to ask her, like, what year was this? Right, right. <laughs> I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it was I, okay, so so I didn't hear the song. It's called The Oracle. It's a, it's actually The Oracle Part 2. Okay. The first Oracle that he dropped in 2017, which I think was like a diss to uh, Cameron, I don't know, he was barring Cameron up in that. I mean, mm -hmm. and he was saying some, like, some fly funny shit, like, saying that Cameron, like, slept with his own sister. Bruh. It was a wild, it was a wild, wild this. This one is a little lackluster. He came in with auto-tune, but he had some bars in there. They were just musically not the greatest. You okay. know what I mean? But I guess the question is, like, do you, like, what, why? Why do people always come for Diddy's head? Why does it seem like people will be friends with Diddy? They come back around and they not friends. Okay. It's a carousel back. We on tour. And now I hate you. It's just like, what the fuck? Okay, so Diddy was... You got to remember where Diddy's origins come from. Mm -hmm. All right? Diddy was schooled by Andre Harrell. Mm -hmm. All right? The head of Uptown Records. Mm -hmm. That was his mentor coming into the game. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing Diddy learned in music mm -hmm. was the business. Mm -hmm. He understood how important the paperwork was. Mm -hmm. He knows that the paperwork makes the paper work. Okay. He understood that coming out the gate, right? So when he got released and fired from Uptown and he decided to start his own thing, he had enough knowledge mm -hmm. and enough understanding of how important the documentation is. All he needed was a check and an mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. And he was able to successfully do that yeah. and built his brand, you know what I mean, yeah. from that. On top of his gift, you know what I mean, like he's gifted he's guy. sonically yeah. gifted. No, he's sonically gifted. He know how to make records. Yeah. And even though he might not actually yeah. make the he's beat, producer, he, so. he knows how to take mm -hmm. elements and bring them together. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person, this this track needs this person. We need this songwriter to write mm -hmm. this type of record so it can be this way. Mm -hmm. Don't get that fucked up. That is art. It's you like dig what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't get it messed up. That that is producing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think a lot of us got it twisted thinking that yeah. you got to hit the yeah. keys, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean, to be a producer. Yeah. But if you have that that gift to be able to sonically hear what's going to work mm -hmm. and put it out there and it works, yeah. it is what it is, right? Yeah. So he understood his gift mm -hmm. and he used what he had to, to build what he, what he, what he did. Yeah. So I think one of the reasons why people come at Diddy it's because they don't understand the paperwork. Mm. They don't understand the paperwork. It goes back to the origin, mm. right? It goes, it goes back to what you agreed to. Yeah. So if you if you listen to the interview that that Diddy gave, I don't know how long ago it was, but he gave an interview where he was talking about Mace, and he said, you know, we 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 broke you off two times. Mm. The first time you didn't do what you were supposed to do, retired. We chopped that one up to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, we tied that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But then you come back and we give you another bag. Yeah. And then you try to do the same stuff all over. No, we holding you to that. Mm -hmm. We holding you to that. Yeah. Because you agreed to this. Mm -hmm. And we broke you off as a result of your agreement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at these advances and stuff like that, again, it, it, it's, it's the ignorance of the artist. But the ignorance of the artist is what leads to 
I can't even call it manipulation because that's the business. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? And then it becomes, oh, wait a minute, I, I didn't get my I didn't get my uh money from my record sales. I sold a million copies mm. and I didn't get a dime. Yeah. No, because your dime is sucked up in that two million we gave you up front. Yeah. You only covered five hundred thousand of that two million after taxes mm. after you sold a million records. Mm. I'm pretty sure those aren't the accurate numbers, mm. but mm. you factor in the record sales, taxes and all that stuff there and you weigh that against the advance. Mm. Where does that come up with the advance? On top of the per diems, yeah. the tours, mm -hmm. the radio, yeah. you know what I mean, the marketing budget, all that comes out of your, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. your two million advance is tapped on with another seventy, eighty thousand dollar budget, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The market that's just a single, yeah. you dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And promote just a single, mm -hmm. and then the PR firm that they have to have, you know what I mean? Like all that shit that goes into doing that. Again, you might have sold a million records, that million records don't cover those initial costs. So guess what? You gotta do it again. Do you think that he's purely benevolent, though? Who? Here, come on! Come on! I keep asking you not to use these scripts spelling bee words with me, bro! Like, you gotta stop that! What, you trying to embarrass me, man? You trying to embarrass me? Something! Shit! You know I grew up in the hood, I ain't cool! You know the school that I went to taught us like robbery shit and we ain't wearing good in English. Our English teachers were scared of us. They just wanted us to get the fuck out the building, man. Went, How you gonna come up with I that went word? To the number, I went to the second worst school in Pennsylvania when I graduated. But you had, you you admitted you was a peculiar cop. You admitted that you went to school. You wasn't us. You wasn't us. I had to go to school. Man. You had to go, go to, to school jail. with us. You had to go to school with us. But you weren't us. Let's not get that screwed up. Okay? Let's not get that screwed up. Can you please use benevolent in a sentence so I can use my context? I did get my context clues. I did learn that. Use benevolent in a sentence so I can figure out if it's benevolent or not. Did he portray himself to be benevolent? But really, he's not. <coughs> Ignorant? Like, oblivious? It, benevolent just means like good or pure of heart. Like you're just you doing things with a clear conscience. Okay, so I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> I like that word. So if if I understand the business mm -hmm. and I'm giving you access to this information, now, now that's the part we gotta put a pin in. No, 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 stop. Does uh, he do that? You have to in order to sign the contract. Just because somebody give you a contract don't mean you understand that shit. Uh, okay, okay, so is that his fault? <laughs> is that his fault? Or is that your fault for not doing your due diligence to make sure you understand that? No, no, no. We're getting back to whether or not he was benevolent, okay. benevolent or not. But I'm right? So, this. so I'm, hold on. Save right, it, okay? Right. So, if I understand that everything that I'm prepared to do on behalf of you is written right here, mm -hmm. and everything that you need to do on behalf of this is written right here, mm -hmm. am I doing that out of a pure heart? I mean, you doing le what's legal, I guess. Am I doing it out of a pure heart? I, I, can, I can't say yes, because... Then you can't... Then, you then, can then, legally then, rob a that's, that, that's the music business, bro. It's all based off of what's written, what you agree to, what you initial and sign and have notarized if it needs notarized, what officiates that documentation. Mm -hmm. Now, if I deviate from that documentation, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. If I have you sign this, but the real one is over here, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But if I give you this, I give you this, you have the phone, mm -hmm. you have Google, mm -hmm. you have Siri, you can contact an entertainment lawyer. I don't understand what's written here. Mm -hmm. So before I sign this, let me not look at this $2 million sitting right here in front of my face. Let me not look at this right now, okay? I know literally I can sign this and walk out of here and can change the, my family's life walking out this building, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm coming in here with $20 in my pocket. I've been trapping. Maybe I got a little, a little more, a little bigger bag because I've been in the streets mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. But I know this is legal money that's going to change my family's life. Mm -hmm. Let me not quickly jump into that. Let me contact a lawyer that can help me understand mm -hmm. what's written here. Yeah. That's your responsibility. Right. If you negate your responsibility, you can't then come back later and put blame. Right. I'm sorry. I, again, I tell you, I start with I start with situations from A, man, from point A. Mm -hmm. So at point A, if 
Everything I said was going to happen and what your responsibilities are in that is written right here and you don't take the time to understand what's written right there, just like you said, come on, man, you know, you won't understand that. Then if you don't do your due diligence to understand it and you sign it, you take the two million and walk off. All right, can I, can I, can okay, I? Okay, now you can do it, I'm sorry. All right, okay. Just because something legal don't mean it's right. We see a lot of motherfuckers get legally fucked over. Motherfuckers go through legal processes and get railroaded every fucking day. Absolutely. Right? If you consider yourself to be one of the realest, I'm one of the realest niggas ever. I'm Diddy, right? And I did nothing I did nothing wrong by my niggas, right? But you put language in the contract that's going to bind them to situations that's going to make them... But like, if it's the finish, 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 Let me finish. You put language in the contract that you know is not to their best interest. And you say to yourself, if they catch it, then, you know, we can, rene we can renegotiate, we can, re we can address it. But if they don't catch it, that's on them. Then you find yourself 10 years later getting drugged all day. And you say to yourself, I don't understand. I mean, everything was legal. They knew what was in there. What, to me, that's, I'm just, I'm going to just speak for me because I value my peace. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put myself in a position to have somebody unwittingly sign some shit that I'm going to have to be in court about in the next fucking five years. I'm going to make sure that before somebody signs some shit with me, everything is on the up and up. If you really, really real. But you could be really, you could be a snake and be using the law to fuck people over. And, and I mean, okay, so you're absolutely right. And I'm telling you 1000%, that's 1000% what the music business is. When you go to them labels, that's exactly what you are doing. Exactly what you are doing. So let's take me, for instance. Mm -hmm. All right? So me understanding the nature of the business, when I was blessed to be able to get the label partnerships and get the things that I have in place as a company, I had two choices. Mm -hmm. I had play the game the way the game is played or play a new game. Mm -hmm. I decided to play a new game, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. I come more from a place like you. I don't want to put people in the contracts. I don't want to be in murky waters. I don't want to deal with all that. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the network and we're going to provide the services. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sign service agreements for what we do. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do contracts. You can go sign a record label, do all that stuff there. But you can hire our company to be able to provide the services you need as an artist. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was my way. Personally, my way of doing exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. So, on the flip side of that, you see the challenges that it brings. Mm -hmm. You understand the grind that it takes to be able to try to make something mm -hmm. because we're not playing from that big spot. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? It's cool. But we're not playing from that big spot. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? We're not coming out the gate with millions of dollars or whatever the case. We're building from the mud. Mm -hmm. So it's a more difficult road. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's a more pure road. And we've had that conversation while we've been out on the road mm -hmm. that I personally would want to make sure that regardless of how difficult the journey is, I'm doing right by my people. Mm -hmm. But I can't say people who decide to start a record company and set it up just like status quo is is wrong evil manipulated or any manipulative or anything like that mm. because that's the nature of the business just like nfl you got people who's nfl like players whose nfl experience was absolutely terrible and then you have others who were had the same experiences but made the best out of it you dig what I'm saying? It doesn't change the fact that the game is the game. The NFL is the NFL, mm -hmm. and they conduct business the way they do. The NBA conduct business the way it does. Mm -hmm. The music business conduct business the way it does. Mm -hmm. If you do not take the time to educate yourself within the nature of the business that you're interested in, mm -hmm. Then you put yourself in position to have these things happen. And it doesn't mean that the person who's handing you the contract or the agreement is snaking you off top. Should have used the new word. What word? Benevolent. Oh. I mean, no, no, it's malevolent. Malevolent would be the word. I'm Who? Sorry. Malevolent would be the word that you was about to say. So you said benevolent. Now benevolent, benevolent is good. But you should have said malevolent. malevolent. Yeah, it's the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite. My bad. Fuck y'all. <laughs> That's it. We're done for this week. Make sure y'all check us out next week. Another super dope episode of the Situation Room. We're going to be covering some more situations, man. Folkland Lows. Tell them where to find you. F-O-L-K-L-A-N-D underscore L-O-S on everything. And make sure you download that Lows the Ghost and be on the lookout 
for more music on the way. Billy's a pimple, you know. Okay, I'm sorry. And I'm D from Grind Mode Music Worldwide, man. Make sure y'all follow us on Instagram at grind underscore mode 412. Matter of fact, just go to the website, www.grindmodemusic.com, and you can tap into everything that we got going, man. Grindmodemusic.com. Grindmoderadio.live as well. It's our radio station, man. So make sure y'all tap in there as well. Grindmoderadio.live. And, um, yeah, you can see what we got going, man. One time. Shout out to Fat Multimedia on the production. Yeah.